Hello everybody, it's Bruce here, back with another video on Python for you beginners out there. And if you're enrolled in one of my courses or Harvard CS50P or one of the other courses, something you may run into is kind of something like I'm about to demonstrate here. So what I want to show you is how you can write a program that'll take commands like you see on line 7 and 9 here, where somebody may type into your program deposit and then a number and then maybe withdraw and then another number over and over again, which is going to keep, which is going to, in the case of deposit, it's going to add money into your bank account. And if you type in the word withdraw and then a number, a space and a number, it's going to um, take that money out of your account um, and your balance, the amount you have left in the account should go down. And if you try to withdraw more money than you have in your balance, then it shouldn't allow you to do that, right? So how do you go about writing a short interactive Python program to do something like this? Because look at this command on line seven or the command on line nine. You're typing in a string and a number here, but how, as a Python programmer, are you to like, split these apart and, and work with them to direct your code to do what you need it to do. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thanks for smashing that like button. It really means a lot. And thank you for giving me these ideas about things that you're running into. All right, so I've defined a function called main here and I'm calling it down on line 32. That's the easy part, right? So what's going on here? On line 15, I've declared a variable called balance, and I'm setting it to zero because it's like you opening up a new bank account. So we're declaring the variable balance, and we're setting it to zero. We're using a while loop here, an indefinite loop that's just going to loop forever, okay? At least for now. We're going to want to have this loop stop, and I kind of glanced over that in the beginning, if the program, uh, if the person just presses the enter key, all right? So they're either going to press the enter key with nothing else, or they're going to press uh, the enter key after they enter a command, all right? So sorry about that. So again, we're in the while loop. On line 17, we are getting input from the user and we're stripping off any leading and trailing spaces. And then right here on line 18, we have a conditional that says, well, if the command that the person entered is not equal to an empty string, that would be if they hit the enter key with nothing, then we can like perform some actions. But if they just hit the enter key, we're going to fall down here to line 28, and we are going to break out of this loop that we started on line 16, because that's going to terminate and end the program. Now, just remember, you know, indentation in Python is very important. If this indentation were not correct, the program probably wouldn't run at all. So let's go through it. Again, if they type in something that's not the enter key, then we're going to do all of this stuff here that's indented below line 18. So on line 19, we're taking the command that they entered and we're going to bust it apart or split it apart where we see a space. Okay. Now, remember, this is the command and that space divides up that command for us. On the left, we're gonna have the, the action that we need to take in this case. And then on the right, we're gonna have a numeric value, right? Or a number. Just hold that thought for a second. So remember, when we get input, this is a string. 
the variable command is holding a string. When we split apart that string, we are left. This is called simultaneous assignment. Um, and the action uh, is going to be assigned, which is either deposit or withdraw, which is on the left. And then on the right, we're going to get the amount, which is this number right here. I'm on line 9 and line 7. Now remember that these are still strings, right? Because they're, they're, they're part of a larger string, and when we split them or bust them apart, right, they're still strings. So more on that in a second. So on line 20, now we need to say, well, if the action it happens to equal deposit, then we need to increase the balance, right? We need to take the current value of the balance and add to it the amount that the person typed in. Now, just remember what I said before, that that amount is a string right up here on line 19, right? Statement 19. So we need to cast it to be a float, right? Um, we want it to be a, a float because we're dealing with money right? We're going to have a decimal place. We may have cents involved in the case of U.S. money. So we're just going to increment the um, value of balance by taking the prior value of balance, the first time it's going to be zero, and adding to it the float and reassigning it back to the variable balance. Bam, right? But else if here the action is withdraw, then we need to first check, wow, Another conditional going on here. Lots of conditionals, right? Nested things going on here. So if the float, right, of amount, right, we need to make that amount into a, a floating point number is less than the balance, that's like you going to the bank and trying to withdraw money that you don't have, right? Um, so only if it's less than the balance can we withdraw the money here and subtract that amount from our balance and reassign the value of balance. Else, if it's not less than the balance, right, this should be, uh, uh, what do you call it, less than or equal to, right, the balance, all right? And then we're just going to print out insufficient funds, like you don't have enough money, all right? Now, this print right here, notice where it's at, right? Notice where it's at. It's it's right in line with line 20. So what's going to happen is all of this code is going to execute, right? It may go it may go to line 21, it may go to line uh, 22, and then possibly 23, and so forth. But eventually, once it gets past all of this, it's going to go to line 27 and then print out the balance for the user to see. So let me show you this, uh, by the way. Let me just open up a new terminal here. I forgot where I saved this. Oh, there it is. It's in my demos folder, CD demos, Python demo-3.py. And now it's say, hey, Bruce, what are you going to do? And if I just enter in, uh, uh, enter, the program ends. Let me run the program again. I'll enter deposit 100. Notice now the balance is 100, and look at the code. It's all right there doing all this stuff for us. And now if I say with draw, I don't know, let's take out two bucks. Now our balance is 98, and I, I forgot to tell you, look what I'm doing here on line 27. I'm using an F string, and if you watch one of my prior videos, on how to, to format stuff with, in Python with f-strings. You'll know what I'm doing here. In fact, I should probably put a comma right there. Uh, so let me just, uh, let me hit enter here to end my program. Bam, let me clear. Let me run it again, right? Woo! And let me uh, say, I don't know, let's uh, withdraw 100 insufficient funds, right? I, I, I just started the program. I, I don't have a hundred bucks, a hundred dollars in my bank account, right? So let's say deposit, I don't know, 200. Okay, the balance is 200. Let me withdraw 198. My balance is two dollars. 
And now let me just say withdraw $1.99. My balance is one penny. So let's try this now, ready? Withdraw 0 0.01 and our balance is zero. And I hit enter, the program is done. So just know that you're gonna experience, again, in Harvard CS50P or my courses, at Clark College, you're gonna experience the need, not this per se, but something like it, to break apart a user's input to mimic what I showed you right here. Thanks for watching, and again, please smash, as they say, that subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment, and I look forward to the next video, which, uh, which I don't know what's going to be about yet, but maybe you have some ideas. Have a great day.